Thank you, Richard. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation for coming up here and speak about uh, the subject of varnish and uh, um, on steam turbine and generator lubricants, um, realizing that this is in 20 minutes is only going to be able for me to scratch off the first layer of varnish. Um, but I will try to do my best and uh, to keep. Uh, um, I know that I'm speaking to a mechanical engineering uh, audience, so um, that's why I put up this first slide. Because there's a lot of misunderstanding uh, today in the world that um, mechanics and chemistry are two worlds apart. Uh, I hope that at the end of the presentation you will understand that, uh, in fact, mechanics and uh, lubricant uh, understanding of the chemical part is really uh, the nexus um, for uh, optimization of uh, reliability and operations. So specifically, I've been asked to speak about uh, the issue of varnish, uh, the problem uh, appearing with varnish over the years. And um, so um, I will then, um, after I explain to you a little bit about what varnish is, for those of you who doesn't know what it is, we'll talk about the root causes and how you can uh, define the different uh, main uh, reasons for forming varnish. Um, more important than how you can proactively react as a company to this event uh, and then uh, finalize in a few uh, steps. Um, yes, varnish, it's, um, the first time I've seen it is uh, in 1998. I did not realize it was varnish. I thought it was more like a sludge. Uh, and it took me another four years to understand uh, what it really was until I saw it in Australia in 2002, where over, overnight uh, refinery um, went down and uh, steam turbine and uh, about 2,000 people uh, without the job. Um, the drivers today uh, for this, um, what we call uh, an industry epidemic, is really, it's uh, first of all, the change of, uh, of the appearance of new generation of technologies. Equipment become faster, quicker, leaner, uh, but also they work hotter, so the conditions they work are changing. Think about the working conditions, <laughs> operating conditions also from base loads to cycling. Uh, the um, industry of uh, oil and additive companies have reacted to that because there were new specifications made by OEMs, and uh, so new lubrication formulations came onto the market, which I will extend on. But the combination of both have led to uh, this uh, issue of varnish uh, today on the market. So um, the formulations issues that have been addressed is that uh, uh, basically the base stocks have changed. That is the, the base oil, um, which has been refined to a much higher uh, quality, uh, but also removed a lot of components which uh, um, avoids the solubility of oxidation products. As I said, the OEMs uh, requested longer lifetimes, uh, higher uh, oxidative stability, so new additive technologies had to be applied uh, and um, new formulation technologies unfortunately had a different way of uh, degradation. So what is varnish? Um, I put uh, just a small selection of over a thousand pictures that we have at Fluitech. Uh, uh, varnish is like it's a thin, lustrous, uh, organic, non-removable uh, deposit who appears uh, mostly on uh, metallic surfaces. Uh, you see here different components of, uh, of the steam turbines. Um, you can recognize different colors also. It can go from light brown to a little bit darker amber. I compare it always with a good uh, ale. Uh, and the same color you can see in, in, your, uh, in your varnish. But it can also be burned, like you see here on uh, this part of the... So varnish is a soft contaminant. It is like a gel, uh, it is not a hard contaminant, like a wire cont uh, contaminant. So soft contaminants, and it's a combination of uh, degraded base stock, base oil, together with degraded antioxidants. Remember what I told you, that new additive technologies are, came onto the market, so additive chemistries have changed. And the combination of them makes species which have a tendency to uh, absorb to especially to white metal surfaces. Um, they have like an elect electrical uh, attraction 
because of the chemistry to white metal surfaces, as you can see here on uh, gearbox uh, axial bearings and um, on the surface of this gearbox. So it's, it's really a combination of, uh, like I said, uh, degraded base stocks. You can see the color again, this uh, orange-brown color, uh, as from this microscopic picture. Secondly, as I told you, they are, it's organic material. Second uh, main characteristic, they're very, very small. Uh, here you can see it's less than 0.1 micron. Um, 0.1 micron, it's, uh, if you have an idea about filters, to give you an idea, it's like 12 micron, 25 micron. Uh, today, um, a hair is 40 micron, uh, those I had before, 40 micron. Um, but the 0.1 micron is uh, incredibly small. Um, in a warm oil, so in a normal operating oil, once they start to agglomerate under temperature conditions, I will show you later, they will grow in size and they will become like one, two, three, four micron uh, as an um, agglomerate polymer. So um, here again, uh, you see also another picture of varnish uh, on a tilted pad. Uh, you recognize that there's like a gradient on color. It's clear because here the varnish started <coughs> to make deposits due to the uh, missing uh, heat dissipation. Uh, you start to burn the varnish. It creates coke deposits. It's more like uh, pure carbon. And then at the end here, it's uh, the first layer of varnish. So some more pictures, uh, all in different uh, categories of appearance. So what can you do as, as a company when you uh, want to avoid this? And it's unavoidable. You need to uh, make actions to uh, uh, um, avoid the buildup of these uh, varnish components. There are good steps for doing it. First of all, choose the right lubricant. There's uh, enough specifications today. I would only guide you and recommend you to use the right uh, OEM specifications, uh, ACM, then ISO. They have been modified and adapted to the latest standards of uh, lubricants. And uh, bearing in mind that, of course, uh, if you know that the lubricant uh, it consists today uh, of a, a major part of the base oil, one, two, three percent of that is uh, additives. Eh? Uh, one of them is uh, antioxidants. Realize that steam turbine lubricants versus gas turbine lubricants today are the tendency is to make one formulation, uh, but they may have different characteristics. So it's important to look at the specification of your new oil. Also, uh, the big difference between lubricants today by group, uh, the group two and the group three oils are the, um, the newest generation of lubricants who are being appearing and, and used on the market. They have much lower sulfur, as you can see here, much higher saturation degree, and those two those big mod have uh, resulted in a big modification in behavior of the solubility. That means that uh, once an oil degrades, it will create, uh, remember, oxidation products, degraded antioxidants, and the solubility of them is uh, decreased significantly. Where is the varnish then accelerated from? Because I, I get many times the question, yes, but 15 years ago, we had the same steam turbine and the same generator and we didn't have the problems like we have them today. It's a fair good question. What is the reason for that? Is that um, first of all the formulations uh, changes, but also working conditions. Eh? Uh, and the main three drivers for oil degradation is uh, caused by slow reaction, low temperature, it's like oxidation with air, heat and catalyzation of metals. That's usually 100, 140 degrees C maximum, but Thermal degradation is the fastest amount of degradation at much higher temperatures, and we're talking about above 1,000 degrees C. It's really burning your oil, created by events like hot spots or electrostatic discharge, spark discharge. My time is li really limited, but uh, we can speak about it later if you want. We've got time. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. We've got time. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, the the electro the spark discharge is created because the fluids have such a low conductivity, uh, they, they have been highly purified, and once the fluid is going through your fine filters, they create charges, they build up charges, and after a while they have to uncharge these charges. It's called sparking. Uh, this creating temperatures uh, close to uh, 
um, three, four, five thousand degrees C. Micro dieseling, another event creating thermal degradation. Um, if you think about design of steam turbines, the, oil, the reservoir size and the residence time uh, of these fluids, um, um, there's a significant effect on the reduction of residence time in the um, oil reservoirs. Uh, unfortunately, that has an effect on the air lease. So if you have oils which are uh, suffering from a good, efficient air lease, uh, and you have um, like seven, eight minutes air lease time, uh, you realize that if your residence time is less than this time, that the air is entrained into your system, and then, of course, creating um, adiabatic compression or micro -dieseling. Again, talking about temperatures above 5,000 degrees C, so really burning your oil in very fine uh, soot contaminants. But the vast uh, contribution today about uh, um, varnish uh, as part of all degradation is the contamination or the cross-contamination, uh, realizing that uh, if you have uh, group one oils and you switch over to group two and group three oils, uh, the new generation of lubricants, uh, the oxidation products from the older generation of oils come in contact with the new generation and have a much lesser solubility and they create an varnish on seals, on bearings, uh, just on those places where temperature is lower <coughs> or where the load factors are extremely higher. Um, and that's, that's really an effect which is, uh, you can only uh, resolve when you are uh, removing these oxidation products from your older old charges before you put in a new old charge into your system. Uh, yes, also, um, the incompatibility with fluids and cleaners. It's the last part here, but not the less important. Uh, use of detergents, dispersants uh, today, although it's banned by a lot of OEMs, there's still um, service companies are, are trying to be smart and use detergents or dispersants to uh, remove that varnish. Uh, just never do that because the first, even a tenth of a percent, or let's say a tenth of PPM, of remaining fluids uh, or cleaners will just kill your uh, air, sepa air separation and water separability overnight. Now, so you understand the type of oil, you have selected the right oil, you know the root cause, you've been looking at uh, avoiding these root causes. Now, the, the most important part, uh, which have been changed over the last 10 years in, in this eff effect of varnish, is modify or adapt the oil analysis. Uh, the power of oil analysis in this epidemic of varnish is incredibly high. Uh, that means that you not only need to uh, use the right, the correct oil analysis test, but also it's, uh, the correct frequency. That has changed. It's becoming short. Oil analysis is a, is a um, faster frequency. For example, one sample a year for a steam turbine is not sufficient these days anymore in, uh, for detecting earlier uh, warning signals of varnish. But also the way you analyze them, and uh, I've tried to list them in uh, three categories. Uh, the first category is, uh, and some of, of you may uh, see some words which are very new, I will explain a little bit later in another slide. But first of all, if you want to detect the varnish, you can use these techniques like particle counting or most important, NPC. It's a patch test kit in order to quantify the amount of varnish of your oil, really as an early warning signal before your problems are starting to occur into your system, before they create deposits on your seals and on your bearings. Second, more very important amount is that you look at your antioxidants directly, you measure them with a technology like a ruler and also that you try to avoid, uh, or at least detect if there's been compatibility issues. Look at your air lease, uh, detect your uh, demosability values and how they trend over the time. Here is really the oil analysis based on trend analysis. And uh, this is for example a trend technique, uh, technique it's for measuring antioxidant, it's called uh, ruler technology. It basically compares a used oil with its new oil, and the gray curve is your new oil, the red curve is uh, your used oil. By this, you're able to predict in a very proactive way how much life is left into your oil. 
It will tell you exactly. And specifications today by ACM, by Siemens, by GE have been made specifically on these te types of technologies because by uh, enabling to detect uh, the remaining antioxidants, you know how quickly your lubricant is degrading because of thermal degradation, which is going and de depleting these additives in a very fast way. The MPC test method is the way to detect the varnish. Uh, the question is, uh, can we really quantify it? Yes, if you have like uh, um, 50 milliliter of oil sample, which is then quantified over patch test kit with a solvent to, to extract these varnish components, then filter them with a 0.45 membrane, you're able to quantify it. You can see the color of the patch. The darker the patch, the higher the varnish amount. Again, specifications are made today and really uh, set up by different uh, organizations. And this is uh, a presentation from ASTM publication that I took as a reference, where you can see how when antioxidants deplete, that's the brown line, from 100 to 20 percent, how the MPC value, the patch value, is showing an increase, a significant increase, knowing that the condemning limit is 30. So you know that today, if you're above 30 MPC, you, have, you run a risk of possible deposits of varnish. You won't even see it, of course because your turbine is still working. It's only when you have a revision or your bearing temperature starts to increase because of these deposits. Last point is that uh, there's technologies today in the market to remove the varnish, uh, like depth filters, uh, um, which are looking more at the contaminant and suspension. The ones which are the most harsh are the ones which are in solution, which lives into the oil. And if you have one same lubricant for your hydraulic oil and your steam turbine uh, um, lubricating oil, realize that the oil which goes to your hydraulic valves will be much colder and those contaminants which are warm in, and keeping in warm oil and have no effect will start to create deposits on your hydraulic oil lines and sticking the valves or even, uh, in the worst case, damaging your valves. So um, there's difficult technologies that can, uh, resins that can remove uh, uh, different amounts of varnish, as you can see here, and then keep your bear bearings uh, like you see it here uh, on this steam turbine. You see the level of MPC levels, uh, particle counts, and MPC coming to an acceptable level. The green ones is at the normal level. The red one, of course, is the, the high level of MPC. But more important is showing how bearings before removing the varnish and keeping them in the green level, how your bearings are then after this uh, operation. And last but not least, uh, it's not just, uh, um, that's my last slide, it's not a matter only from, uh, as you understand, selecting the right lubricant, applying the right oil analysis, looking at the root causes, but today in organizations, uh, it's a matter about education, training, uh, making up the right lubricant manuals, selecting the right lubricant, and uh, making sure that you uh, have the most efficient maintenance program with the highest reliability. It's a combination of different factors, and uh, I believe that uh, there's, there's no one-step solution in this uh, varnish um, um, appearance or uh, problematic. But certainly, um, as you can understand, if you already dig as much as possible into the oil, in the depth of the oil, it can learn you a lot. Or like um, we always say, listen to your oil, you um, uh, avoid a lot of mechanical uh, issues. So this was uh, the timing, and uh, if you want to speak about it later on, I'm, I'm available in more details. Thank you very much for your attention.